Well, we've reached the end of an era for me. After 14 years, I'm officially done with World of Warcraft. Why? They sacrificed my favorite character on the altar of raid boss and fake honor. The biggest point of contention of Battle for Azeroth, World of Warcraft's latest expansion about the faction war, except not really, is the current war chief of the Horde, Sylvanas Windrunner. Sylvanas is a character defined by her amorality and her victory at any cost mentality. She has no scruples holding her back, and in a world where nearly every other character is bound by some code of ethics, she has consistently been the deadliest and most effective leader either faction has ever had. So far, nearly every battle in Battle for Azeroth has been a decisive Horde victory precisely because Sylvanas fights dirty and the only recourse other characters have is to whine about it. What I love about this is that when you combine this amorality with the faction war, you run into some really interesting things. I made this point in Steven Universe's Garbage and Here's Why, and because I'm a hack, I'm gonna reuse it here. You see, one of Steven Universe's biggest problems is that a massive story arc is spent worrying about whether or not Rose shattered Pink Diamond and it's treated like a big morally gray issue. The problem comes from the fact that the question of whether it's moral to kill your enemies in a war is superseded by the the fact that those enemies are aggressively murder-happy and dangerous, and they need to be stopped regardless of your personal feelings on the matter. The whole thing about the Horde is that their members are basically split into two main groups. There's the Orcs, Trolls, Torin, High Mountain, Torin, and Magar, who have all basically assimilated Orc culture of honor and glory, and then there are the Forsaken, the Blood Elves, the Nightborn, the Bilgewater Cartel, and the Zandalari, which are motivated by either survival or personal interest. What vastly separates these two groups is their relationship to the Alliance. The Orcs, Trolls, Torin, High Mountain, and Magar are all relatively friendly with the Alliance to some extent. There's bad blood with the Orcs from the First and Second War, but by and large, they get along with the Alliance relatively well. The others... Do not. The Alliance has tried to wipe out the Forsaken and the Blood Elves on several occasions, the first of each being when both factions sought the Alliance out for aid in a desperate situation. The exact same desperate situation, actually. Sylvanas reached out to the Alliance upon first taking Lordaeron for the Forsaken since she was a member of the Alliance when Arthas attacked, but because the Forsaken were undead, the Alliance attempted to destroy them and backed several factions to drive them out of Lordaeron. So Sylvanas turned to the only viable ally you have when the Alliance is banging down your door. The Horde. Thrall welcomed them in with open arms. The Blood Elves were also subjected to the Alliance's random genocidal whims when they were being treated like slaves in the midst of an apocalyptic disaster. Faced with little options, they turned to the Illidari for aid, but when that seemed to go nowhere, Sylvanas reached out to them and brought them into the Horde. The Bilgewater Cartel joined the Horde because relations with the Alliance went sour and the Alliance did what the Alliance always does and attacked. The Nightborn first attempted to seek out the Alliance for aid, but Tyrande turned them away out of little more than paranoia. After visiting with Lorthamar and seeing how being in the Horde allowed the Blood Elves the freedom to practice their heritage, and how the Alliance seemed too walled off and cloistered, along with just flat out fucking throwing them away. The Lysra looked into joining the Horde, and Sylvanas welcomed them with open arms. Are you noticing a trend here? The Alliance tries to destroy an entire race or otherwise kicks them into the dirt, and so they turn to the Horde because the Horde is the only faction that can stand up to the Alliance. Triple that now, since the War Chief is a ruthless motherfucker. This comes out to Legion, where the Alliance spends the entire expansion trying to take revenge on the Horde for the Broken Shore, despite already knowing that the Horde wasn't to blame and Anduin explicitly told the others not to do this. Gen tries to kill Sylvanas over a personal grudge, despite the fact that doing so would kickstart the exact kind of war battle for Azeroth is about, and then the Alliance attacks the Horde in Silithus when they're mining Azerite, which the Horde has every right to do. At what point does anybody become surprised that two years of escalation and attacking results in a retaliation? So Sylvanas attacks Darkshore to secure Kalimdor and their Azerite veins from Alliance interference, which, by the way, was sending their fleets to Silithus to attack the place. But the Alliance seems to have forgotten that the Horde is now run by the Queen of not fucking around, and so she goes, I'm burning your tree, get the fuck off my continent or I'm gonna kill you all. This is what Sylvanas does. She has no scruples, no restraint, and she will go for the throat instantly. When Garrosh ordered her to take Gilnea so the Forsaken would be butchered, Sylvanas disobeyed a direct order not to use the Blight, and inevitably used the Blight, because of course she fucking did. Shut up, Garrosh, don't pretend you have restraint. This happens in the battle for Lordaeron when Sylvanas uses the Blight again, and it results in a sure win. The only thing Sylvanas didn't account for was Jaina. Had Jaina not showed up, the Alliance would have lost here. In fact, even if they had managed to break through the wall, if Jaina wasn't there to pull everyone out of danger, the entire Alliance leadership would have died in Sylvanas' trap. The Alliance and and most of the Horde has always tried to keep up a facade of honor, but unfortunately for them... Honor means nothing to a corpse, Sawfang. You have the luxury of underestimating death, but it is something with which I am intimately familiar. Maybe you don't care if your people die so long as it's honorable, but to me, this Horde is worth saving. 
Anyone who disagrees does not deserve to stand among us. So die your warrior's death, High Overlord Sarfang. It means little to me. Perhaps I will raise your broken body to serve me once more. Or perhaps you will have a chance to say hello to your son. Sylvanas, from the moment of her first appearance as a Dark Ranger in the Frozen Throne, has always been ruthless and cold-hearted. Anybody who is surprised by the burning of Teldrassil or was angry that Sylvanas burned the tree, I have to ask, where the hell have you been? But the point I'm trying laboriously to get to is that despite the burning of Teldrassil making Horde players ask all kinds of questions like, are we the bad guys? And is this evil? There's another question that supersedes all of this. Do I care? Do I care if we're the bad guys? Do I care if this is evil? And the answer is no, because the target is the Alliance. I simply don't have the sympathy for the Alliance required to feel bad or angry about the burning of Teldrassil, because this attack has always been a long time coming, because the Alliance has never been able to rein in their shit for five seconds. Even just playing the Alliance quest for the full story makes me queasy because of the overwhelming presence of fanatical lunatics like Torellian, and how the Alliance leaders are always going on about how they're the Light's chosen and they will wash the evil corruption from this land. The Alliance is a cult, one that has a body count far higher than the Horde will ever have, and it needs to die. Now that all sounds cool, you might be thinking, but I did prefix this video with the announcement that I had given up on WoW, so what happened? Saurfang happened. High Overlord Varrock Saurfang is the current racial leader of the Orcs and has been something of a meme character for 14 years. He only ever shows up to give a lecture about honor and does little else beyond that. In Wrath of the Lich King, he gives Garrosh a lecture about honor, which Garrosh repeats in Cataclysm and then subsequently abandons in Missa Pandaria. In Missa Pandaria, Saurfang lingers around Orgrimmar, complaining that Garrosh is acting without honor. He shows up in Legion to regain his honor on the Broken Shore and is promptly shot down. And then in Battle for Azeroth, Saurfang shows up again to wind about Sylvanas' lack of honor for almost the entire time he's ever on screen. Saurfang's actions in Battle for Azeroth prompted half the Horde players to remove their shoulder armor in solidarity with Saurfang, claiming, No honor, no pauldrons! Saurfang has been inspiring a lot of players to get really into the Horde's ideal of honor. There's just one problem. The Horde's ideal of honor is complete bullshit. The biggest demonstration of this goes back to Missa Pandaria, where Garrosh has become Orc Hitler, deporting non-Orc races from the Horde, trying to murder Vol'jin and destroying the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, and basically plotting to burn Stormwind to the ground. Despite this, he actively chastises Thrall for not having enough honor. Sarfang, meanwhile, sits by and does nothing about Garrosh for the entire damn expansion. And in Battle for Azeroth, he up and abandons the Horde because it doesn't have enough honor for him, and he actively defects to the Alliance. Even before before then, his whole attitude about honor is thoroughly dismissed by Tyrande. Honor is a narcissistic fantasy held by Saurfang, one he routinely refuses to actually demonstrate. This would all be interesting, except that in the Tides of Vengeance update, a quest line has been added where Sylvana sends you to locate Saurfang, and this is where I gave up. When you finally find Saurfang, he's being arrested by Dark Rangers, and you're forced to aid him in killing them. You don't get a choice in the matter. Blizzard have finally shown their hand. They are very much pushing for Saurfang to restore honor to the Horde, and for Sylvanas to be the next Garrosh. Any idea about criticizing the fantasy of honor is gone. This, for me at least, was the tipping point. I don't want to be on Sarfang's side. In my eyes, he's a deserter and a hypocrite. He constantly talks about honor when he left his own people instead of standing up and struggling against the so-hated warchief. This is an extremely dishonorable act. Sarfang has always been the most dishonorable person in the Horde, more so than Sylvanas because of his rampant cowardice. He talks a lot and never actually does anything. Even when you're forced to join him in restoring honor to the Horde, he hides out in Swamp of Sorrows doing nothing. And he's been this way since Cataclysm, talking a lot about honor and yet refusing to do anything about the two warchiefs who he claims have gone off the deep end. He did nothing about Garrosh, he does nothing about Sylvanas. He runs and hides like a dishonorable coward. Vol'jin, Sylvanas, and Lorthamar all stood up to Garrosh, even going as far as to openly threaten him. Saurfang did nothing. But more than Saurfang being a dishonest, lying bastard is the fact that the previously mentioned lack of sympathy the Alliance has engendered means that the idea of the burning of Teldrassil as some kind of moral event horizon rings hollow because the Alliance is Warcraft's equivalent of the Great Diamond Authority. Blizzard has yet to give me a good enough reason to want to betray Sylvanas in the first place, and yet they have assumed that I'm already on board with another orc that talks a lot about honor but refuses to practice it. In an expansion where the light is shown to be malicious and zealous conviction gets you killed, you'd think the 
the orc's obsession with honor might get a similar kind of thrashing, but apparently not. Blizzard will not let go of their precious honorable orcs. Worse than that, Blizzard seems to be constantly rewriting Sylvanas' motivations every other week, swapping back and forth between genuine love for the Horde, viewing the Alliance and Horde wars as an inevitability, wanting an infinite supply of Forsaken, and just wanting to burn the very concept of hope, despite the Blood Elves still viewing her as a hero. As the expansion goes on, Sylvanas loses the pragmatic and ruthless nature she was known for, and becomes more and more like a bog-standard tin pot dictator. But this is where we get into the biggest problem. Sylvanas is a character who is very dependent on who is writing her. Between writers, her personality and relationships to other characters can differ extremely. Like how in the Legion cinematic, where Greymane foils her plans to acquire more Valkyr, she's very stoic and calm. But in the Christy Golden novel, Before the Storm, she is far easier to anger. In some comics, she has a positive relationship with Lorthamar. In others, their relationship is more strained. Sylvanas lives or dies on who is writing her and how they personally perceive her. With this, Blizzard have made it clear that the story doesn't matter. If they decide on a whim that they're going to speed a beloved legacy character downhill at 100 miles an hour, they will ignore anything that might contradict that. What reason is there to care about the story when Blizzard has so brazenly demonstrated that they will not bother with it? This wouldn't be the first time that a character's complex design was completely abandoned to turn them into a crazy lunatic. Pretty much the entire Burning Crusade expansion was devoted to taking three characters that people grew to respect and making them different flavors of insane for no reason just so they could become raid bosses. A story decision so lopsided in favor of the spectacle of a major lore character being a boss fight that it was the biggest gaping wound in an expansion already full of them. The entire the entire Legion expansion was one long set of corrections and saving throws to salvage a fan-favorite character from the burning dumpster fire that Blizzard had thrown him into. There is precedent set already for Blizzard to ignore or disregard their own storytelling, especially with something as messy and complicated as the Faction War. The current setup of Vulgin Spirit returning to investigate who whispered to him to make Sylvanas the War Chief hints that they're trying to set up some kind of nefarious twist with the Lich King himself getting involved somehow. There's an evil plot afoot, but there didn't need to be. The faction war itself was already fueled by mutual hatred and bigotry. It didn't need a big bad. It didn't need some master plan. What it needed was to finally sit down and go through the decades of bad blood, atrocities, and constant backstabbing that have made the Horde and Alliance so hostile to each other in the first place. I'm reminded of when Khadgar expressed disappointment that the Alliance and Horde were fighting again after working together to defeat the Burning Legion. And I love that moment because it's so perfectly encapsulated just how much Khadgar doesn't get it. You can't just get over all the shit the other faction has done to you. You can't ask the Blood Elves or Forsaken to just forgive the Alliance's repeated efforts to wipe them out. You can't ask Greymane to forgive the Horde for invading and destroying Gilneas. Jaina still hates the Horde for destroying Theramore, despite the fact that we've already dethroned the one responsible because they were only following orders doesn't fly as an excuse. Sylvanas is certainly not a character who can do no wrong, but she was the focal point of all the garbage that makes the faction war as messy as it is. She was a member of the Alliance, who was raised into undeath by the Lich King and then promptly abandoned by her allies because undeath made her an abomination in their zealous, light-obsessed eyes. Sylvanas' entire story was a microcosm of why the faction war continues to rage on, and she recognizes that peace will not last unless Blizzard forces it to. And, well, it looks like they're going to. They're going to blame and scapegoat Sylvanas, ignore all the shit that led up to this, and just manufacture a happy ending. This has been my biggest anxiety about World of Warcraft since Battle for Azeroth launched. Sylvanas Windrunner is my favorite character precisely because she falls right in the middle of the clusterfuck that is Horde and Alliance relations, and her story details why the Alliance and the Horde cannot stop fighting with each other. It's because there has been too much betrayal, too many open wounds, too much bad blood, that a very large portion of each faction will not allow such a truce. The Horde and Alliance have had truces before, but someone with a very strong grudge always breaks it, usually Greymane. And Sylvanas' entire story is one that details just how deep Alliance treachery goes and how badly it's affected her. Sylvanas is extremely cynical and starts the war in Battle for Azeroth seemingly because she knows it's coming and she'd rather get it over with than prolong the inevitable. This is why the faction war is so interesting to me because it's very personal and usually involves the handful of characters we know and like. It's been drilled into our heads since Warcraft 3 that there are no quintessential good guys in Warcraft, despite what some idiot Alliance players might believe. Leave. The way that Saurfang, Greymane, Jaina, and Sylvanas are all characterized as a narcissist, a vengeful moron, a nervous wreck, and an extreme cynic respectively should be proof of that. The Naru trying to go all GIVE YOURSELF onto Jesus, onto Illidan should be proof of that. Torellian almost immediately wanting to smite a harmless old priest just because
because he was forsaken should be proof of that. But it does seem like some writers at Blizzard are willing to do away with that very personal story and use Sylvanas' status as the resident amoral faction leader to just make another big bad. Another Garrosh, before moving on to the expansion about the Void Lords, so we can team up against another universe-ending threat that falls like flies, and then come back and decidedly not address the issues back home that started this war in the first place, to continue putting off the uncomfortable questions in favor of letting the players feel more like the most bland, boring, safe hero imaginable. I would love more than anything to be wrong about all of this. I would love for Blizzard to come out an 8.2 or something like SURPRISE and actually acknowledge the story they spent so long making. Little hints of this in the Blood Elf Heritage Armor questline keep that hope alive, but as the story stands right now, I can't go along with this abandonment of what I thought was a really interesting story and the destruction of my favorite character just for the sake of imaginary honor. Sylvanas has been my favorite character since the Frozen Throne. 15 years. I was ecstatic when she got a bigger role in Cataclysm, Missapendaria, and Legion. I was excited when she became Warchief, and now seeing her get put on the same slaughtering table as Garrosh and Vol'jin, while the Alliance continues to play Karma Houdini like fucking Starlight, is just... <sighs> it's just depressing.